before this, I was not, I was a green green energy entrepreneur trying to sell solar panels because I knew it was a good idea, but I didn't have any experience in that field, so it, it failed horribly. But now in education, I have a master's in education. You know, I've been teaching for ten years, so this is my. I literally have been working in education primarily since I was in second year of, of college of uni, as you would say. Because I think it's so so important that math and everything is not taught in a vacuum. Because we don't we live in a vacuum, but we're taught in a vacuum. You know, John did this and had so many apples. Who's John? And who, I mean, who cares about these apples? You know, it's really about trying to tailor your lessons to what that student is interested in, so that the student can actually um, realize their own gifts and actually feel powered in them. And then when they feel powered in one gift and one more confident in one area, they actually feel more confident to try other things. I strongly believe that education is the most powerful way to enact change, positive change in the world. When was the green energy stuff? Um, around the same time I got married. <laughs> a couple of years later, which is not a good time to start a business when you're about to get married. <laughs> I learned that. Welcome to the Qualified Tutor Podcast. I'm your host, Ludo Miller, and I'll be interviewing tutors and thought leaders from across the tutoring landscape to inspire, inform, and motivate you to become the best tutor you can be. The Qualified Tutor Community is a safe and supportive space for tutors who love to learn and grow. We offer training, resources, ideas, and a chance to connect with like-minded tutors. If you'd like to continue the conversation, join our Qualified Tutor Community at www.qualifiedtutorcommunity.org or find it in the show notes. Welcome to the next episode uh, of the Qualified Tutor Podcast and uh, welcome to, to Perry Clemens, um, a, a tutor and a games creator based in, in Manhattan who spent uh, many years as a, as a primary level maths and, and English educator in the US. Uh, Perry also has an MA in applied linguistics uh, and is currently uh, working on an MS in, in childhood education. Uh, more recently, uh, Perry has, has turned his attentions to bridging the gap between kind of the most up-to-date strategies in maths teaching and learning and the parents of today's children who, who weren't taught in this, in the same way. Now, uh, more importantly for, for this podcast and what we're going to be chatting about today, uh, in the past year, Perry has, has put his mind to the task of creating a set of maths-based games uh, under the banner of Mathic Games. And we're going to be hearing a little bit more uh, about that. Um, and these games have been designed to address the, um, this gap in understanding that I've just mentioned and to allow students to access maths questions and problems through gamification. Uh, I also wanted to say that for those of our listeners who are already members of the Qualified Tutor community, you'll be familiar with the sharing of, of subject-specific resources. Um, so for our maths tutors, uh, get ready to add another string to your bow. Um, but welcome, Perry. Uh, thank you so much thank you. for joining us. That's a pleasure. So uh, we were talking just earlier, and you mentioned that you wanted to kick us off here with a riddle. Now, I... Yes. Um, I'm very pleased to hear that because we love we love a riddle and we love a, a pattern that, that that kind of develops over the podcast. So please, Perry, what is this riddle that you'd like to kick us off with? Oh, thank you so much. So um, the riddle is four is a mathic number. Okay, so um, I'm giving you a sequence of numbers and you try to figure out what is the pattern, what's happening with this sequence of numbers. So eleven is six, six is three, three is five. Five is four, and four is a mathic number. I'm going to try another one. 17 is nine. Nine is four, and four is a mathic number. The answer will be given at the end of the podcast. Stay tuned. Watch this space, but also be thinking throughout this, this conversation, next 25 minutes or so, about that riddle. Um, for those who think that they may struggle don't worry um it took me a long time in fact i might actually not even have got the answer before perry told me the first time so don't worry if you don't get it uh, because i didn't even manage to either but thank you perry, for... when i first heard it <laughs> <laughs> exactly well maybe that's that's the trick um okay so that's given us a good thing to think about before before we before we kick uh, right off here perry so um 
we often start with a question um, along the lines of, of what kind of a student were you? But we've decided to turn our attention more towards um, an area that comes up as part of um, the qualified tutor courses that we run, looking at, at creating a culture of learning and looking at, at, at why we tutor and, and what our objectives are. So we'd like to, to start um, today's podcast, Perry, with the question of what is your why uh, as a tutor? Uh, so great question. So uh, my why as a tutor is I strongly believe that education is the most powerful way to enact change, positive change in the world. And um, I um, that's what I, I I strongly believe. And every kid, and I told my students this when I was teaching, and I still teach my kids, I tutor now this, is that every student, every person is a genius at something. Not everyone is lucky enough to figure out what it is. And um, that question you had earlier about how, how were you a student? As a student, I was not seen. My gifts weren't seen. I didn't see my own gifts. So I want to, as a tutor and as a teacher, as an educator, I want to make sure that kids see their own gifts and have ways to see their own gifts and make those gifts in an impactful, positive way to the world. I love that phrase. That every every person is a genius at something. Is that is that something then that you've you've kind of weaved into your tutoring? philosophy is that something that, that you work on with your yeah, students for sure i mean tutoring gives you the great opportunity to actually have more specialized teaching and cater to a student's interest so um like for a kid that has an in steam or stem as you would call it in um, the uk um i will go with that and students sometimes students are big into marvel movies so i use that to do reading comprehension and writing um, comprehension, um, com composition. So um, it's really about trying to tailor your lessons to what that student is interested in so that the student can actually um, realize their own gifts and actually feel powered in them. And then when they feel powered in one gift and one more confident in one area, they actually feel more confident to try other things. And you never know what other things that they'll try and succeed in that will affect the world positively. Mm -hmm. Just like adults then as well, really. I think we, we work in a similar way, don't we? <laughs> you succeed yeah. in one thing and then you try the next um but no absolutely i think that's that's a really uh, an amazing way of looking at at how we inspire students is, is by is by getting them to show their skills in one thing or develop their skills in in one area and, and then using that to build um onto the next area and the next area um certainly you know far better than another way around which is which is moving on far too fast or or, or pushing on without really without them letting them understand a particular topic or a particular area or a particular skill so yeah absolutely now we mentioned before um the, the set of, of, of wonderful maths based games that, that are helping students to to draw out to tease out maths problems and questions under the banner of of mathic games now could you tell us perry a little bit more about these two games these two slightly different games that that you've created Sure, we're glad to. So the games are um, based on games I used to play as a kid. And I also then later played when I was a teacher um, and a tutor, realizing that these are really fun games to play. But when I was playing them with my students, it wasn't as mathy as I wanted it to be. I was playing with a better deck of cards with king, queen, jack, and trying to make a king into some other number was too complicated for students. So I was like, how can I make this game more mathy? So I thought on it, and then I thought about the game Mathic Number, the card game of arithmetic which is an educational card game made to help parents, teachers, and tutors build math competency in the students by teaching and reinforcing common core with, um, facts and operations and concepts. So it's a, it's a game where you, there's six types of cards. There's a basic card from zero to 12. I was very important to put the number zero in there because as a math educator, you know how important it is to have students understand the value and the impact of the number zero. So we have the number zero to 12, and all the suits that you would expect, clubs, hearts, spades, and diamonds. And then you have the more um, special cards, as I would call them. The special cards are a rounding card, which rounds to whatever number is on there, um, a greater than or less than cards, greater than less than or equal to cards, multiple cards. And the multiple cards, for example, are like there's a, a card, um, multiple of three card. And this card can be any number that is divisible by three, from three to six to nine to three million. And then there are the fraction cards. And the fraction cards can be either the fraction shown or the actual number. So for example, there's a card with um, 10 um, clubs and half of the clubs are empty. So that card represents half or five. Yeah. So it's a way for them to not only to touch on to rounding, greater than less than, all these kind of equations, all these type of operations are in that one game. 
And not only is that game can be something that you can play, but teachers can actually use it as a resource deck and use these cards to teach certain lessons. When I taught third grade or year three in the UK, um, rounding was also very difficult for students to understand. But this cards actually help us so that they can understand what a rounding card is by just seeing it as a physical card. That, that this card can be, you know, for example, a rounds to 80 card can be any number from 75 to 84. And then there's another game, once I was making that game, it was hard to kind of put all the, the, the operations that are in elementary school math in a one card game. So I had to like so overflow. I made it into another game called Mathic Fraction, which is a card game of, of fractions, which is the same thing as teaching the fraction values. And it has zero to zero, instead of zero to 12, it's zero twelfths to 12 twelfths. And then there's also special cards. There's greater than less than fractions. There's simplest fractions. And it's also even or odd numerator cards where the numerator can be even or odd and the denominator is either a two or three or six or 12 or four. And also there's um, no totally wild cards, which are the top and the bottom are both can be either odd or even based on what's shown in the card. And these, these games are just made from to just kind of make equations and um, explore math. And it's fun seeing people and seeing players try to struggle to see what kind of equations they can make with certain cards in front of them. And it really is a really uh, real way for them to make these equations and really use these operations. Yeah, um, it's it's wonderful hearing an explanation of the game because Perry and I uh, played this game recently. Perry took me through yeah. kind of the, the, the basic rules of the game and, and really they're, they're not complicated to understand You know how to play these games. Um, I was shocked... Uh, you know, and, and I hope none of my the students that I tutor maths to are listening to this. But I, I was shocked at at my own, uh, you know, the, the hesitancy and, and and lack of speed really that I'm able to kind of conduct quick uh, arithmetic or, or even fractions based kind of equations. Um, but the games, both of the games, really do force you to think very much on your feet. On your feet, uh, and I think we're going to go into this uh, in a little bit just just now. But there's a real sense of the games forcing you as the as as the player to to come up with the answer and, and to talk mm-hmm. through the answer yourself, which is so much more than often students are asked to do in math. They're asked, often asked, um, perhaps in a classroom, if they've got the right answer and, and they don't have to actually talk their way or, the, or explain the processes that they've been through. To join the growing number of qualified tutors, enroll now for the Level 3 Qualification for Tutors. This eight-week online facilitated course covers the roles and responsibilities involved in teaching and learning, with a particular focus on inclusion, assessment and feedback. Upon completion, you'll be awarded a Level 3 in Education and Training from Ofqual recognised training provider Highfield Qualifications. You will also gain a Qualified Tutor Quality Mark, the independent quality mark for tutors. Whatever your starting point, a qualification for tutors has to be the next step. Enroll today at qualifiedtutor.org forward slash training. That, 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 those are base, that's a very good basic uh, explanation of the, of the rules of the game. Um, of course, in the show notes below, you'll be able to find links to the games. And, and as Perry um, was, was telling me recently, that the games are very much meant to be physical games as well as online games. So um, yep. the actual board game, much like uh, a Monopoly or a, or a, um, you know, a Cluedo board, will be available um, uh, you know, in, in, in physical pieces, in a physical box, uh, in very, very shortly. But um, Perry, what, further, further than the rules of the game, what, what, is the, what, what purpose do these games serve? Okay, well, that's a great question, right? Because I'm not sure, I mean, I, I imagine in the UK, there's also kind of a transformation of math, hopefully, you know, kind of ch- moving away from how we were taught as kids, where it's just kind of compute, insert, plug it in and compute, find the answer, everything, just put it on top of each other and compute it. And, um, and you know, we're learning now a more um, useful style of math in which you are taught to be flexible taught to use different tools, taught to kind of use, be, be more flexible with how you actually solve problems. And um, this is hard because when I was teaching, my st- parents didn't know how to do these things. And parents would teach the students the old method and the students are struggling to learn the new method. So we have this whole clash of generations. And I really believe that there's a, like a really like a trinity when it comes to education. There's the parents, there's the educators, and then there's the students. And all three of them need to be in alignment 
and to have the best possible outcome. And so, without the students um, and the parents knowing the same kind of math and having the same math knowledge, it's really impossible for them to really excel. So this is why I made the game because I struggled with this so much as a teacher um, to actually make it so that students and, and um, parents and tutors, teachers in general, can play this game with the students, learn with them in a fun way. Like this is like something you could do in game night. You know, it's not just something that is homework. My students, um, when I'm playing this, is the most fun part of their game, of our sessions, you know, because yeah. students, people love games, people love winning, people love gamifying things. And gamifying is why, is why I did gamify this game because it's so, it's so useful. So the purpose is to, to bridge that gap. And not only, it's not gonna only take a, a card game, it's gonna take also a virtual version for now, for virtual tutors. Also, we're working on a, a workbook, you know, stuff like that. It needs to be just like a whole, um, really intensive focus on making sure that parents and, and educators and students are the same page. Because math is so important, especially in this, um, you know, new technology future that we have now. It's so important that students understand math and are able to think logically, think critically, and think outside the box in, in, in working with math. Yeah, I think that those are such key skills, aren't they? Um, being able to think outside the box, being able to differentiate yourself from from kind of the rest of, of the students or kind of the, the standard way of thinking, you know, showing that kind of um, academic or that kind of intellectual spark is is really very valued, not just in the classroom, but kind of in, in the workplace as well, isn't it? But, but let's dive a little bit deeper into what you were saying just there about bridging the gap and about the kind of these different styles of, of maths. What, what, why is it important that we bridge bridge this gap, as you say? Well, it's, uh, it's important for one was education to make sure we're raising the most educated um, generation that we can because we have big problems that we need to solve. And this is why when I was teaching, I um, taught there wasn't a, a STEAM or a STEM class, after school class at my school. So I started one because I know how important um, science, technology, engineering, arts and math is because it's not only about creating things and making money and, you know, going to the Mars or something like that. It's really, to me, STEM and STEAM is about problem solving. It starts with empathy. So what is someone's problems? What are problems we're facing? What are problems the world is facing? And how can my skills help to, help to, um, to alleviate those problems? And that's why I see that this is so important to bridge this gap and have people understand how math works. I read a book that's talking about how math is really the science of not ever being wrong. <laughs> it's kind of the science of knowing what you're doing um, because math is something that gives you that kind of um, objectivity that this is you know, a, way, a way to do things. So I feel like the more power, the more educated our generation is, the more we're going to be able to solve these big problems that we're being all faced with. Okay, there we go. There's the message then. There's the, uh, the, the inspiring message for the, for the next generation is maths and science is, is the way that we're going to be helping to solve the kind of the issues that we face. And faced. empathy, you know. Yeah. And empathy, yeah. 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 Oh, precisely. Yeah, totally. I think um, just for anyone who's unsure uh, what STEM or STEAM is, it that's STEAM is science, technology, engineering, the arts and, and maths. And, and in the UK, we, we just have STEM without the arts. Um, it seems weird almost to me that you include science, technology, engineering and maths with the arts. But uh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, that's it. it's a crucial. It's clearly a crucial part of why you've designed the games. Uh, and I think that comes through very much in the uh, in, in the playing of the game and in, in the in, in the understanding of the game. Even just the kind of the short, comparatively the kind of short gameplay that that, that we did uh, carried out recently. But uh, I imagine over yeah. many sessions of this game, you start to develop kind of your own understanding of it and your own uh, you know the own lesson you know the lessons that you yourself take from it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I do really see that that. that those two working in harmony you know playing the game and, and teaching parents and teachers of you know who were students themselves before many years ago how yeah. the current generation are, are learning um yeah and i do want to say one thing about the arts is that like for one my mom's an art teacher so if i don't put it in there she'll be mad at me when she hears <laughs> this um and um and of course she's inspired me a lot and also, you know, humans, we are emotional. Like we think that we're rational. We think that our decisions are made off of logic and ration, but really it's a lot of emotion, how we see things, 
how we perceive things, how things hit us, how they make us feel, really affects how we interact with things. So without, I see without art, all those science and technology engineering can, can't be used by humans in the way that it needs to be because it won't be accepted by them. It needs that art, it needs that emotional effect to really make a deep connection. Mm. Well, uh, as, an, as a former art student myself, Perry, um, I'm very glad to hear that. Um, <laughs> I love it. You're, you're giving your validate, yeah, you're giving validation to her, to the whole field of arts there. This summer, join us for the first ever Love Tutoring Festival, a celebration of tutoring in all its aspects. We invite you to bring all your experience and expertise to make this event the most exciting event to ever happen in the world of tutoring. The festival, running from Monday the 28th of June to Friday the 2nd of July, is a rich and varied programme of free events, keynote presentations, workshops, live podcasts and practical demonstrations spread out over a whole week. And don't worry, everything will be recorded. So as long as you're enrolled, we'll give you access to any of the events that you miss later on. We're also offering a limited number of tickets for our famous CPD accredited workshops. If you purchase a ticket to any or all of these practical and engaging workshops, you'll also receive a certificate of completion after the event. To register for the free pass and to grab your CPD tickets, go to qualifiedtutor.org forward slash love tutoring festival. Let's turn um, slightly towards tutors themselves. Um, yeah. And not, not just kind of playing these games, but actually, uh, you know, for example, for a tutor you know, listening to this today, how can they uh, make use of this? So how can a tutor weave this into their, their tutoring sessions? How can a tutor make use of, of these maths-based resources? Well, I mean, I, I made this game with, teeter, with educators in mind. So this, there's many different ways that students, uh, that um, educators can uh, use this in their tutoring sessions. Um, for one, it's a virtual game because we've been in a virtual time. All you have, you know, just up at, um, on the website, you can find access to the virtual edition of the game. And also the game is very adaptable. So as I said earlier, how there's six different types of cards in the game. So if you're playing with a kindergarten student, you would only play with the basic cards, like zero to 12. And you'll just be adding, subtracting, stuff like that. Um, and then as you, uh, as you um, get older in the first grade, second grade, you kind of would add in cards. So this game is adaptable to each kind of each student to what they're studying at the time. So if you want to do rounding with your student, you put the rounding cards in. If you want to put, you know, grade and lesson comparing with them, you put those cards in. And um, that's also something that I really want. And also the same thing with Mathic Fraction and all the card games are like this where you could, they can be adapted to these students and to the, um, to the situation that you're having. And um, yeah, and also be encouraged at that patient. I mean, some of my students, when I was playing with them, they will make up different iterations of the game. We've, we've made war out of the game. So there's so many different ways that, 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 um, that educators can actually play the game because even in the rule book, we, we encourage adaptation. We encourage you to um, adapt this game to your own needs. And if you do that, please let me know. Please please send an email to us and let you know how you're adapting it because we love to hear how, how people are adapting it to their students. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I think that's uh, so important. And of course, we're also working on... Um, also, yeah, this is a resource deck as well. So not only is this a game to play, but you can, students can, people can use this as a resource deck. And in also the deck of cards that you, you know, when you purchase a game, there's also a, a, um, 10 operation cards. And operation cards are just that. They, are, they have one operation on one side, uh, one operation on the other side. So you can use those as kind of manipulatives during um, a gameplay. And yeah. Um, yeah. And, and and really, yeah, I mean, I, really, I really, I really want to say that the ways you can adapt this to your own, our own um, teaching style and students is infinite. And it's just like about, you know, so many different tools are made for teachers. And this is another one of them. And I think what's really important there was the discussion there about what you were saying about using this with kindergarten kids. Because it's, it's almost, well, I find it's often the more basic, the younger students with the more basic maths um, calculations where resources are, are sometimes hardy you know there's so many wonderful yeah. resources now manipulatives for higher stages of maths but sometimes it's just the basic you know here's a number how do we get to this number using one other number for example you know we've got 12 and we add some number how do we get to 
you know, 32, for example. Um, yeah. And, and it's those that, that kind of very basic building, not that you have 20 on any of your card. That was a, that was a bad example, but you know, it's that kind nice of thing. That, yeah, exactly. Maybe you need to use some other operation there. Like, um, my brain's yeah, not working uh, for that. Also, uh, also with this game um, set is I really, I didn't put the, the card numbers, the numbers of for each card is not on there. So um, I, you know, cause of course we know subitization is a very important skill for students to have to be able to see a pattern of shapes and be able to know what number it is. So we use that pattern and for the kindergarten students that pattern is built upon from the zero card to the, to the 12th card, to the 12th card, so that um, students aren't fed, this is number one, this is number two. They just have to look at the pattern themselves and, you know, supertize. And the, super, the supertization is actually something that's very helpful for students to really learn in those kindergarten and first grade um, times. Okay, so this is a game that's going to stay with a child right the way through childhood. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, into their yep. teenage years, take it to college with them. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah yeah we'll go to that later <laughs> <laughs> okay well no that, that's, that's a great place to, to go into so um yeah but what is you you've described the game you've described how it can be used you've described how tutors can use it you've described what the purpose of these games are on, on, a, on a deeper meaning rather than just playing a game but but where where can this go perry um what, what's oh yeah what's next for for mathic games um, glad you asked. So a lot of next for it. Um, we are rolling out the um, you know some new new games because of the overflow and just um, of all the all the domains. Really, our goal is to have mathic car mathic games represent all of the ki- kindergarten to fourth grade math domains. Um, and so we are working on mathic time, the same game that's based on time, same game based on ma- um, mathic geometry, mathic measurement, mathic addition and subtraction facts. In which instead of having the number one, we have the card that is two minus one, right? So people could build their math, their addition facts. And all, then later, you know, multiplication and division facts as well. Where instead we have the number one, we have one times one, right? Um, so, and mathic decimals, because my students are now getting older and older and moving to decimals, mathic percentage. Um, and really, uh, hopefully, I want to move into making, uh, adapting these to also coding languages, which are so are the future, and also have operators like less than, greater than, like, like that, and they're equal to in there. So, um, yeah, mathic JavaScript may come too soon, too. <laughs> Who knows? Mathic and also, Python. Okay. Mathic Python, mathic C. I mean, all I mean, all of them are the same kind of our languages and the ways of communicating values and what's, you know, so I think all of them could fit in. Also, I am working um, with some very talented um, um, with my colleagues to make a workbook that's focused on this game, on these cards. I will make a workbook based around these cards because not only, as I said earlier, not only can you play this game, but as a resource deck, um, educators can view this game. For example, there's a card that's less than 10 and the card can be any number less than 10. So you can have your students say between the less than 10 card and the greater than one card, which one can do the, can make the most numbers? Which one is more powerful? Which one would you rather have in your hand? And, um, you know, there's cards in the game that are super powerful. There's a card there that's greater than one, right? I mean, that's a very powerful card. There's a card less than less than 1,000, you know? So there's so many different activities you can do with the act, with the cards. And not only do I want to do this, um, activities based on mathic work, mathic um, number and mathic games, but also just in general, the, the, all the kind of... Um, Activities I did with my students when I was teaching, like stock, stock, um, stock picking, which is always fun for students, and a, a crazy weird way is that students also enjoyed doing taxes. <laughs> I had the students like calculate their taxes after I paid them or whatever, and this is a good activity. So activities like that, there because I think it's so more important that math and everything is not taught in a vacuum because we don't we live in a vacuum, but we're taught in a vacuum. You know, John did this and had so many apples. Who's John? And who, who, I mean, who cares about these apples? You know. If we want to have things applied. So I want to try to make things apply to people's life, which is which is helpful to help them learn, but also prepares them for life. I mean, I'm not sure about in the UK, but in America, we're not taught how to balance a checkbook, how to how to write a check, how taxes, like real life things that are incurred math that are interesting to students aren't really taught. So those kind of things will be put into the math workbook. And also we're working on making a fully dedicated website, which will be able to more easily play mathic number, mathic games with your students. 
Okay, wow. So there's quite a lot. Yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, it appears to be. Yeah, well, it, it does strike me that there's a seemingly kind of never-ending um, possibilities for where these kind of games can go. I mean, maths yeah. is being gamified at probably at a greater rate, you know, amongst educators across the world than, than it ever has before. And and obviously, you know, students um, of any age will always love games. So um, it yep. doesn't appear to me that you, it needs to stop at, at basic operations or anything like that. So um, there's a little bit for our listeners listeners to to incentivize them to to continue the journey with with math and games and with you, Perry, um, and 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 working with you kind of I feel like the many other types of educators that you will end up working with, Perry, because there's so much to come from from these kind of um, resources. I'm honored to work with all the educators out there around the world. You're all nation builders. There's, 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 there's another inspirational message that Barry's <laughs> left me. We're, we're, there's, that's at least four that he's left us with. Um, <laughs> so listen up here. Um, but you, you, can, you can contact Perry. Um, you can find Perry at, at mathicnumber at gmail.com. Or, of course, you, could, you can always log on to uh, uh, and find more information about the game, um, including how to, how to purchase it when it when it's eventually uh, goes on sale at mathicnumbercardgame.com. Um, yep. Which I will will be in the in the show notes below, of course. Um, but Perry, thank you so much for joining us. That's that's uh, around um, you know 25, 30 minutes of, of really really uh, important and, and, and uh, informative stuff about this area that before a couple of weeks ago, Perry, I knew nothing about, and now uh, I feel <laughs> like I know a great deal. So um, thank you so much. That's the challenge for our listeners. But uh, yeah, no, I hope you enjoyed coming on to to explain it um, and to talk. All right. to- so speaking of challenges, it's time to end our with our riddle. Of um, course. So I will repeat. I'll repeat the riddle. We start at the, at the top of the show. Um, so four is a mathematic number. Why is four the mathematic number? What is happening with the sequence of numbers? Eleven is six. Six is three. Three is five. Five is four, and four is a mathematic number. The other sequence is seventeen is nine. Nine is four, and four is a mathematic number. Okay, are you ready for the answer, Ludo? Drum roll, please. <laughs> okay, so the way you solve this is by thinking outside of this, uh, outside the box, and not thinking about these as numbers, but thinking about the letters of each of the numbers. So we think of a number 11. 11 has six letters. Six has three letters. Three has five letters. Five has four letters. And four is a mathematic number. And then we'll do it again with the other sequence we have. 17 has nine numbers. Nine has four numbers. So every number, whether you go over the millions, billions, any number you do will always come back to the number four because of the nature of the English language. And go a little bit deeper because four is the only number in the English language that is itself, right? So the oh. lesson all along with this is be yourself like the number four. <laughs> title of the podcast maybe <laughs> yeah um I'd, I'd love to know if they've tried that with you know 240 trillion 972 million 380 <laughs> whatever the second part of this is. podcast <laughs> yeah, exactly. someone somewhere will take on the mantle of, 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 of yeah. working it out for the biggest numbers out there i'm sure it's right a, a listener out there a listener out there that's your challenge <laughs> that's your challenge yeah exactly if you already knew what the riddle was before Perry had barely started then um, it's your turn to take the challenge one step further. Um, thank you, Perry, for ending on that. You've taught a, a lot of people a lot of things today, and you've also oh, given you. their own party trick as well. So uh, yes. thank you very much, Perry. Um, and, and we'd love to, to, to have you back on the podcast when, when the game has developed a little bit further. Uh, and of course, Great. I'll be seeing you at, at the Love Tutoring Festival that's taking place later on uh, this, this year in, in, at the end of June. Um, so awesome. catch Barry there, uh, catch a, a great deal of other um, international tutors from, well, you know, as the word suggests, from all over the world, um, from the US, from Canada, from, from, the, from the UK, of course. Um, but uh, once again, Perry, uh, a, a huge thanks for coming on uh, and we'll catch you're up with you soon. And thank you. Thank you for having me on. And thank you for everything you're doing as a qualified tutor to elevate the, the view and the practice of being a tutor because it's such important work. And I benefited from tutors when I was a student, a struggling student. So I appreciate all that you do out there.
that's that's what we want to it's the message we want to spread isn't it that that, that um the tu- the best tutors will, will will create the best educators for later on in life um yeah all right good <laughs> okay perry cheerio then such a pleasure bye thanks for listening to the qualified tutor podcast where tutors share their expertise to support the tutoring community. If you'd like to continue the conversation, join our Qualified Tutor community at www.qualifiedtutorcommunity.org or find it in the show notes below. We exist to connect, share and learn with you because tutoring is a small job that makes a big difference.